Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Fix This House. On today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you how to install some low profile, ultra thin LED energy saver pot lights, also known as recessed lighting. So stay tuned guys. So once again, friends, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Jay from Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell. I do a lot of DIYs, how-to videos, product reviews on this channel, and I hope that I can help you out in every single way that I can. So before we dive into this video, I wanna let you know that this video is gonna be a lengthy one because I'm going from start to finish, guys. With that being said, I'm gonna be dividing this video into three different parts so you can skip along well, I hope you don't skip along on any of them because they, I, I think you'll find it very helpful and useful if you watch the whole video, but it's totally up to you. First part is gonna be the product and tools that I'll be using. The second part is the layout, how I'm gonna lay out the ceiling, what tools I'll be using to do that. And the last part is gonna be the wiring and the full install of the lights. I'm gonna be putting the different time marks on the description below. Feel free to click on them if you don't want to watch the whole thing. But again, I suggest that you do because it's going to be very interesting and very helpful. I promise you. Product that I'll be using today is the Ensignor Pot Light. Now these I got at Amazon and all the tools and everything that I use in this video, I'll leave on the description below so you can easily click on them and find them easily. This is the six inch version. There's two versions of this. There's the four inch and the six inch. But since that I'm gonna be installing this on my living room, I wanted something bigger. So I went with the six inch. See how thin this piece is? So one of the key features when you're shopping for slim recessed pot lights like these it are the clips. Now these clips are very important. You want to buy something that are very strong, which these do have. And this is what's going to determine whether your lights are going to go sit flush up on your ceiling or if it's going to leave a gap and droop down. And you don't want that. That's why having a strong clip is very important. There are options where you can get six or 12. I end up getting the 12 because I'm going to be putting six in my living room and a few in my kitchen in the future. So buying the bulk, is gonna save you a lot more than just buying little bits and pieces over time. The color that I got for this one is 5K. Now it's totally up to you. 5K is daylight color. Uh, I'm gonna be putting this on my living room. So I wanted something a little brighter and not somewhat yellowish, but it's totally up to your preference and you can pretty much pick any color lighting that you want. Now this is 1050 lumens. So that's pretty bright for that amount and also this is an energy saver LED. Now let's take a look at what's inside the box. And like what I said, I got the dozen. So there are 12 of them lined up here. And it also come with each individual J boxes. And they also come complete with wiring and connectors as well. These lights are dimmable. So if you have a dimmable switch, they are compatible for any dimming controllers that you might have. So here are the tools that you need. So let's break it down. So when we're gonna start wiring it, I'm using the 12-2 wire, um, depending on what code on your area is. But for me, this is the type of wire that I use mostly for my home. It's a type NMB 12-2. Okay, and I bought 250 feet because I'm gonna be laying this, I'm gonna be installing six of these um, pot lights and it's gonna run through all of my living room so more is better just in case you don't want to run short and then i have the staples that we're gonna be stapling up to the wood uh, which is gonna be on the joist need your tape measure and this is gonna be really helpful guys i have this laser leveler now this is gonna come in handy when we're gonna lay it out on my ceiling and i'll show you in a little bit when i start laying out um, all the spots that we're gonna be installing them on my ceiling. This is the Craftsman Laser Leveler. And one of the ones that I'm gonna be using and try to use to locate the joists are, are, is this Franklin sensor. I made a specific video on this. So if you guys are interested, I'll leave it on the link up there for you to watch. This is one of the best, in my opinion, on finding studs. And let's see if it works when we go find those joists. And another one that's very important I use this a lot to save my life. It's pretty much the voltage detector. This thing I'll point out on every single wire that I use. 
um, even though I turn off the breaker I use this just to make sure that there is no live power when I'm working on this I am NOT an electrician I do this for DIYs and to help you guys so make sure that if you're uncomfortable in doing any type of wiring you contact your electrician or have a professional do it you also will need this wire stripper you'll need this drill because you, I'm going to be using this handy hole saw right here so this is probably one of the most important tool that you need for this install I got this six and five eighths pretty much close to six and a quarter inch uh, hole saw I got this at Amazon because Lowe's or Home Depot only carried the six inch and I needed something much bigger because when you measure from here to here from this end to this end it is about six and a quarter and that's what I needed so I'll leave all these tools that I got here on the link in the description below so friends now that I've talked about all the tools and the product that I'll be using I'm gonna be showing you how I'm gonna prep my ceiling and I'm how I'm gonna lay out every single one of these pod lights where I want it on its location so we're gonna go lay it out and use this laser leveler and let's get right to it So friends, I wasn't kidding when I told you that I was going to start from the very beginning of the preparation. So right here, you can see that I'm going to prep it with some flat paint. Um, this one, I chose white for my ceiling. And as you can see, I'm applying the very first coat. Uh, flat is actually the most preferred because that's actually the best one that doesn't produce shine. And it does create a very good infinite look. I finished putting on the paint letting it dry now it has that nice texture I'll finish doing the walls later on so what I'm using here is the craftsman laser leveler it has this nice pin that's uh, on the very bottom so you can actually pin it anywhere which is goes great with drywall because you can just attach it like that and while I pin it like that and you find your mark I am slowly using my uh, Franklin stud finder again this stud finder is the best at finding studs and the joist on the ceiling as you can see it hits everything right on the spot and I'm just marking everything with um, so I'm marking everything with masking tape once again it's very important to wear gloves when you're doing this because having a dirty hand or oily hands will mess up your freshly new painted ceiling so right now my wife's helping me locate where we're gonna put the lamps and every green masking tape that's where we're gonna place the recessed lighting you're gonna find where the laser line is and just mark that spot right on the middle of where you want to put it just as long as it doesn't hit the joist that's why you marked it with the masking tape so now that you made all your markings on the ceiling of where you want to put these pot lights it's time to put the holes on which you're gonna use your hole saw and your drill. So all you gotta do is take your hole saw, attach it to your drill and tighten it just like that. So friends, before you actually start making holes on your drywall ceiling, I highly suggest that you test this out on a scrap piece of drywall because you only get one shot at doing this and if you make a mistake, it's gonna be a timely one trying to repair it and making a new hole. So why not practice on a piece of drywall? So let me show you a good tip on how to first make the first initial hole. Okay, let me show you. I know the very first thing that you might want to try to do is actually just line the drill bit with the hole and just go right on it just like that on a clockwise manner. But the problem with that is that if you go like this first and try making it the very first time that the 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 teeth of this hole saw makes contact with the drywall there's a possibility that this could go and run away on different directions making uh pretty much pretty much messing up your ceiling and you end up having to patch it once again or repaint it to prevent that from happening instead of drilling in a clockwise manner go reverse 
try it first on a counterclockwise against the grain. So the, instead of the teeth eating right through it, it's going to go right against it. Put your drill on the reverse mode and we're going to run it the opposite direction first so that we can first score the face of the drywall. So let's line it up first with the hole. Okay, and now we're just going to go slowly score the face. There you have it. Okay, so lift up. So there you have it. You've scored and you actually you actually made an indentation around the hole that you actually want to do. So that acts as a, a pretty much a runway guide so that it'll prevent this saw from going to different direction and running off the track. That's just one of the good tips and good practices that you want to try out. Now let's put some clamps on this so it doesn't go anywhere. Put it back on regular clockwise manner. Insert it back on the hole. Just like so. And now let's just start drilling right through it. Now let's see if the pod lights will go right on this. You're just gonna lift one of the clips and actually just feed it right off to one edge of the hole. Just like that. Lift one of the clips up like that, insert it through the hole, and then adjust it accordingly. And it should just suck right in, just like that. Nice and flush all the way around. Now I haven't taken the plastic off yet, but again, on the back, it should look like this. See how that the clips are right over the drywall and it sits nice and flush. Here's a debate that's been going around. Um, I know that a lot of people want to take this gasket material around the pot lights off. To be honest with you, I know that if you're put, installing this in the bathroom or whatnot, I really think that you should just try to keep this on no matter what because this acts as a seal between your ceiling and the pot light. And with this gasket, it's kind of like having a gasket and any type of plumbing or any joints or whatnot. This will try to keep all the your heat and everything from going out to your to your ceiling or to your to your attic so in my opinion i think that keeping this on will help prevent that and without this it will not have a very good seal so it's totally up to you but for me i highly suggest that you just keep this gasket on there it's there for a purpose so why take it off so right here I just place a nice piece of plastic drop on the where I'm going to start drilling. Uh, this will pretty much control the dust as I start drilling. As you can see I'm using the reverse method first and now I'm going to go in a clockwise manner. Do this nice and slow. Don't be pushing the trigger way too all the way. Let it run its course and then just slowly run your drill nice and slow and controlled motion. And there you have it. It should have went right through and just pop that cap off and it should expose the insulation right there. Now once again, I'm doing, I'm repeating every single one. I have six of these to do. Again, I'm just reusing the drop that I used on the beginning and now I'm just repeating the process. Reverse first, then do it clockwise so now I got the first three done I'm gonna move to the other side of the room and do the exact same thing so now that I've done all six of them it's time to do the wiring so now friends we're gonna head up to the attic and we'll start wiring I got my gloves got my headlamp Let's head on up and start wiring. So friends, now we're up here in the attic. 
um, if you can see, I'll show you where those holes are located. I just lifted up the insulation. I'll zoom in. There's one hole right there, one hole right there, and another hole right there. So I lifted up the insulation. Now we're going to go and start running the wiring. And I'll show you how to do that. And across each one of those holes should be another hole on the far side. So again, the wiring that I'll be using is the 12-2. Okay, so type NMB. And I'm going to be securing them with the NM cable staples. They're about a half, uh, half inch. That and your hammer. So that's our main power source right there. And I want you guys to turn off the power from your main circuit breaker. I'm starting the wiring on that end first because that's the closest to the power source. Once we get everything connected, I'll show you how to put and tuck that away inside the J box. And we'll run it right across here, across, over, and that's where it should end to complete the series. So I'm not a licensed electrician, so if you're uncomfortable doing any type of wiring inside your home, please hire a certified electrician, okay? I don't want you guys getting hurt or shocked. Okay, so we'll take this. As you can see, here's our living room. So I'm gonna make a loop like this, and I'm gonna feed it right through the hole, just like that. So again, make a loop and feed it right through the hole. Let's do one foot per each hole down deep so that we can always have enough. If it's too much, we can always cut it down so that we have enough wiring to play with. You don't want to cut yourself short because you always think of also that how you're going to orientate the wire and staple it after you put it inside the hole. Take your staples and neatly staple it to the joist you don't want to over pinch the wire because that will cause some damage to the wire and you don't want that so just enough to hold it in place but not too tight that you'll end up pinching and damaging the wire this is how it's oriented so far we have it looped through the first hole I left enough line so that we can connect this to the main power source for a J box and this is the one coming off the spool and we'll continue on to the next holes. Here we are now. There's the wire running through here to the second hole. Okay, so I stapled it right here. Then we're going to make another loop. Okay, so there we got it. Okay, so now we got two holes done. We'll move on to the third hole, bring it down there. And then we're gonna go across to the other hole. Now take your J-Box and insert the two wires on the insert slots. I'm leaving about six inches so I have enough wire to work with. Now with your wire stripper, take out about an inch off each end and then connect the neutral white with the hot black and then ground to ground. Now right here, I'm using a wire nut to connect the wires. Easy as that. And then just twisting the ground wire together. No need to put a nut on that one. And then just bury it on the J box. Conceal it and you should be good to go. Now as you can see right there, there's about one foot wire that I left on each hole. So that should be enough wire to work with. Now your pod light should have came with already with these J boxes. What's nice about these J boxes is it already has these wires, the white neutral, the hot black, and the ground wire, which is the green one. Now take your flathead screwdriver and just pop one of the sides. Uh, it doesn't matter which side, whichever is convenient for you, and just take out the tab. Easy as that. Now take your wire cutters and just split the wire in half strip each end about an inch and then just as what you did on the very top j box just do the same thing with here match the white with white black with black neutral with neutral and then just insert it through those wire connectors which was already provided with this j box so 
so as you can see once again black to black green is all the ground wires and white neutral now carefully tuck everything inside the J box close it and just tuck it neatly on the very top and then just connect your pot lights just like that make sure that you twist it to fully secure the pot light and again it's so easy to insert this just take one of the springs and then set the second spring and it should just snap in place just like that easy so there you have it friends the final result these are 5k bright daylight white I love how it illuminates my whole living room again friends thank you so much if you found this video helpful please hit that like subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune of DIYs product reviews and how-to videos just like these on my upcoming videos which are more to come you guys and gals have a good day I'll see you on the next one